In this video, I'm going to go over the very basics of InDesign and how to start a saddle stitch booklet. Right now I have my sample up of my booklet labeled TOC, Table of Contents, Beginning Inside Page, Mission Statement, Logo. This is for a brand book. What I want to break down here is the very basics of how to add type, image, color, shapes, and how to control your type as well. First, I want to start off with pages. Now, mine is set up like this. This is usually the custom with essentials. If yours is set up differently, all you have to do is come up here, click on the arrow down, and go ahead and change that. I usually stick with essentials, um, but these come in handy as well. If, remember, you can't find your tools just like in the other Adobe programs, come to Window, and you'll be able to find them in here. Remember that this just means there's extra, so you might have to go into a subcategory. So first I want to go to pages, and here are all my pages laid out. Now with the saddle stitch book, you will need pages of four. So with this, I've set it up in a particular way, which I'll get to in just a minute. But when I export this as a PDF, and if I wanted to export this as a PDF in spreads, which means this is one spread, but actually two pages, pages two and three, it would actually read a seven. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But in actuality, there are 12 pages, as you can see here, identified in InDesign. So don't let that confuse you. Now, you have your regular pages, which you can design on, and then you have your master page. So if I come up here and click on these, double click, I'm in my master page area. You can see that because it's highlighted in blue and over here as well. If I wanted to add a new master page, all I have to do is make sure I'm on my A master and click masters here. I'm actually just going to delete that and keep my A master. Now what this does is that whatever is on this page, you can put on all the other pages. So let's say there's a certain color you want throughout the whole book on the same location on every page. You can do that here. Now don't be confused with the A and A. That is just for figuring out page numbers. So if I go to page 2 and then page 3, I had to use the AA first in order for that to start. And I'll show you in just a few minutes about how to make page numbers as well. So back up to here, let me show you an example. I'm just going to come over here and make a basic shape. And I'm going to fill that in black. And then you can see here on all these pages, because it's on the left hand side, they're all there. If I come over here, duplicate that shape, maybe make it smaller, you can see that they're all on here as well. So if I come to page 7, it's going to look exactly like that. So you have to be very careful with your master pages, because again, whatever you put on there, it will show up on the other ones, but it can be great for consistent design and also the grid system. So if I wanted to set up my grid system, I would set that up here, and then this way it could rain throughout the rest. Now how to set up a grid system so you can easily work with alternating it or moving it is just like with the other programs you pull from your rulers. Again if you don't see those it is command or control R. You just click and drag and there you go. Now you can see I already have my rulers set up. They are in a bright blue. If I click and drag over them, I'm just highlighting them and they're going to turn a dark blue. That just means they're activated and they're selected. If I wanted to move one of these, I just have to click and drag and it moves as easy as that. So I can delete if I want to or I can move if I want to. All you have to do is click and drag the ones that you want to select and go ahead and move them. Now how I got this view is I hit W on the keyboard. So this is sort of final cut what you'll see when printed. So if you have any bleeds, which means a color may be running over, an image running over, you'll see that cut off. But if I click on W, you can see all the hidden secrets inside. So I tend to work in W the whole time until I need to see sort of a final proof. And then I'll go back and forth. You can also come down here, click on the little white arrow, 
and you should be able to extend different views of it as well. If you do Shift W, it will take you to full screen with a black back. So again, Shift W, Escape W, see everything in the grids. If you don't want to see the grids, but you still want to see sort of the background, like the boxes and maybe images bleeding off, um, all you have to do again to hide grids is Command Semicolon. So a lot of hotkeys I'm throwing at you. Feel free to write those down. And then there's W again. And so those are the basics of seeing your page. Next, we're going to open our own document so you can see how to set up. But what first I'm going to show you is I'm going to go to File, and then Document Setup. So you can see what I've done. So when we're picking for this, we're going to do Facing Pages. Now we wouldn't normally do that if we're just making a poster or a flyer in here. Facing Pages is strictly for books or booklets. Number of pages, so you want to go in sets of four, so feel free to start off with four, eight, and then move up. Page size, you want letter half, width 5.5, height 8.5, and you want the orientation to be portrait. Bleeding, that's if you want colors to run off the page. You can do this also by cutting down the paper as well, but if you have a certain size page that you want and a full bleed, then you can use this. And then I just want to push cancel because I wanted to show you what that looked like. So now we're going to open our own. So if the program opens, it usually comes up with a, a box like that. But if we're already opened here, we're going to just go to File, a new document, Command N. So remember these settings all changed. We can already go to print up here. And we can already come over here. It's still in PICAS, which is a a way of measuring type. Really, for us, we're going to use inches. So I have facing pages, I have 5.5, 8.5, orientation this, and I have it at half letter. And I'm going to create. So I've only put in one page, so I'm going to come over here to my pages, and I'm just going to click new a few times. So there we go. I have 12 pages. I already know that this is going to be the first page I see outside of my cover. The cover for these booklets are done in another document. Still in InDesign, but just in another document. So if we come back to the original one that I had, this is going to be the table of contents or the beginning inside page. doesn't necessarily have to be the TOC, but just know that it's the beginning of the inside page. So you want, might want to plan this with the inside cover of your booklet, or maybe pop a logo on there or something like that. But do remember that after the cover, this will be the first true inside page. And then, just so you know, these are all separate pages. So this is definitely page 2 and page 3, page 4 and page 5. And together they equal one spread of reading. So we are designing this in reader or designer spreads so we can design easily, we can read it easily, but we will be printing another way, printer spreads. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to show you how to first do page numbers. So I'm coming up to my type tool, T on the keyboard. I'm just going to click and drag and make a box and put A in there. If you want to, you can come up here and change the type. Now be careful where you put the page number. It doesn't technically have to go at the bottom or the corner. It can go maybe on the side, maybe on the upper corner. Just watch where you want to put that, especially when you're thinking about trimming. So again, I'm going to come on my type tool, and I'm going to click and drag and highlight that A. And then I'm going to come up here to my type. I'm going to come up to insert special characters, markers, current page numbers. And then you see if I'm on page 2, it says 2, page 4. But if I come over here, I'm still on A. That's just because I haven't done the other side of my A master. So I double clicked, I'm on there. And I just have to do the same routine. So I drug over the other A before I made it a marker. It's just best to do this twice to make sure that InDesign understands exactly what you're asking for. Again, type, insert special character, markers, current page number. Let's go to page 3, page 7, page 9. And there you go. That's how you add page numbers into InDesign.